Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you very much for coming back, or if this is your first time, then welcome. Um, I am going to do a two month review of the Rurock Atlas 4. So, uh, for any of you that watched my previous video, I did a first impressions, which was uh, an extremely early first impressions. I'd had the helmet a few days. I'd only rode with the helmet, say, I think two times, um, which didn't give me a lot of experience, but what I wanted from that video was an absolute, pure, um, unsponsored, unbiased uh, opinion of the helmet a couple of days after I'd had it. Um, I think unboxing videos are all good if you just want to see what it looks like, but I wanted to give that sort of uh, pure and raw impression of the helmet. Um, that being said, the reason I'm doing a two month review, uh, I initially planned on doing a six month review so I could get some real good um, sort of feedback from the helmet itself, learn a bit more about it, get used to it a little bit more. Um, however, the reason for this video, and you may guess from the title, is uh, I'm actually sending this helmet in specific back. Um, I am sending it back to get a replacement, and um, not really because I chose to do that, but that's the position I'm in. So, um, reason why I'm sending the helmet back. So at first, as I mentioned in my previous video, it was a very tight fit. And at first I accepted that, and I just thought that maybe it's just a tight fit, and it is what it is, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, just the type of helmet, it, 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 the extra padding in there for the new EU certification standards. I thought, you know what, maybe I'm just not used to it and I'm just being a bit fussy. Whatever. So, in saying that, I carry on using the helmet. Uh, like I said, I've been using it pretty much consistently now, uh, probably like three to five days a week for the last two months. Um, and like I say, my commute to work's an hour there, an hour back, uh, and some of that's included uh, some trips out with some friends. Uh, so like a good four or five hour ride. Uh, and the size has just become more and more of an issue. It's got better getting the helmet on and off. One, me getting used to it. And two, I think the pads are sorted. They've, you know, when they're brand new, they're, they're crisp. They're as thick as they'll ever be. And bit by bit, they're sort of worn down a little bit. They've softened up. So it is a bit more comfortable. The problem is anything more than about 45 minutes on the bike and all here is you can feel the pressure on your face. Um, it, it, it pushes sort of your, uh, along, your, my, along my jawbone. So, for example, I had some chewing gum at work and I just didn't really think what I was doing. Threw my helmet on, I started riding home and within the first 30 seconds, I literally looked for first place to pull over because chewing whilst the helmet was on was just hurt. It was just, it was painful because my jaw muscle as it flexed out was pushing against the helmet which was just so tight anyway that it was just so uncomfortable. Um, it, it, was, it just wasn't an enjoyable ride due to that. And a couple of the long trips I've been on, um, like I say, about four hours of solid ride and then another four hours after a break, uh, I've just been dying to take it off. I'm absolutely dying to take it off and just give myself a bit of a breather. The, 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 the fit is just too tight. It is just too tight. Uh, for those that didn't watch my previous video, this is a SM, a small medium, my head measures at something around 56 centimetres and like 0.2. Um, and the the margins for this helmet, <clears throat> that's perfect for me. The SM, according to their website, according to what they said, uh, I actually emailed them and messaged them on Facebook to just confirm these sizes. And they said, yeah, as long as that's what you've measured, you'll be fine. Uh, that wasn't the case. It, it, it is just too tight. And the problem with Rurock um, is you can't just go to a store and try it on like you can with a lot of the other helmets out there. You can usually find somebody that stocks it and go and try it on. Even if it's not the colour you want, at least you can try it on and see how it feels. So, size was the first thing. So I contacted Rurock uh, and their response was basically a very uh, scripted response of unless you have not worn the helmet and it is still intact like when you took it out of the box with the sticker across the visor, um, and so on, then no, you are not allowed a refund. There is nothing you can do. You've sort of voided your ref your return policy because you've took all the stuff off and you've put it on and you wrote it. I knew this before I bought the helmet. It says it on their website. However, I thought, you know what? I'm going to try my luck in a sense. I, I felt for a helmet that's like £375, I thought, you know, it's worth a try because it's a lot of money. Uh, but they weren't interested. I got a very basic response. 
So I immediately responded to that email um, with a couple other sort of snags I have with the helmet. So on quite a lot of videos I've watched online, people have made some comments on the front grille uh, and the sort of vent lines that you've got here. Um, I'll sort of zoom in so you can see that. Uh, and I hadn't really looked at them. You know, I sort of looked at the helmet, I accepted it for what it was, and I loved it. The problem is when you actually get a bit closer on the edges of the vents, there's a lot of rough areas where it looks like they haven't sort of, they've took it out of a mould and then they haven't finished the product, they've just used it as it came, so there's all little jagged edges. Uh, I've had actually no issues, I've got no faults here with these side pieces. Um, however, again, uh, on the back of the helmet, there was um, quite a few little imperfections all around the edges here, uh, all around the base here as well. Um, and on top of that, it was just little things like this little wing at the back, so it's part of it is part of the helmet and there's a little attachment and it is literally, I'm not sure if you can see this, but you can literally wiggle it and it almost feels like it will just pop straight off in your hand and I, I don't know, I don't know, I, I, yes I'm being fussy, yes I'm, I'm getting a bit annoyed with it so I thought I'm going to include this in my email. So I did that um, and they basically had the same response, I got the same automatic response that we don't accept helmets back if you've worn them, blah blah blah. blah. Um, and I sort of thought, oh well, you know, whatever. This was this was probably only about two, three weeks after having the helmet, I'd say. It wasn't too long. Um, I just, I'd wore it enough to know that it just wasn't right. It wasn't quite the right fit. It, it, it presses so hard. Um, and even with uh, the shockwave system, uh, it has recesses in the ears. But I, you can feel it pressing against your ear where the speaker is. Um, and I don't know why it does that. I don't know why it's designed like that. Maybe that's how it is. I mean, I don't. I feel like my ears don't. Put my ears aren't tucked into a hat or anything here. But I don't feel like they stick out very much. So they. I've never had that problem before with other helmets that I've had intercom systems. So, just a little bit disappointing. So as the time went on, I basically started progressively got more and more annoyed. Um, and I went out on my first ride with a friend. Uh, he has a Cardo um, intercom system, built, uh, no, not a built-in one, what he's put on his helmet himself. Um, and we thought, well, why not use the um, Shockwave application? Because, you know, it makes sense. Uh, it's built for all Bluetooth-based intercom systems. Uh, it uses data uh, to make a phone call. So it's sort of like a WhatsApp phone call, or if you phone um, via... Um, via Wi-Fi sometimes, things like that, that's how it works. So it's not on phone uh, mobile signal, it's on mobile data. Which, you know, I'm not that bothered by, it doesn't, you know, the distance means you can go much further away from each other and you don't go, you haven't got to worry about it. All that matters is, uh, obviously, coverage, internet coverage. The UK isn't too bad. Um, there's a couple spots where we lost it, um, like I don't know if anyone knows, the Stratford area. Uh, we went down there, um, the, literally this weekend, just gone, it was a nice sunny Sunday. Um, and you just you don't get signal. Now, that wouldn't be too much of a problem if the app actually worked. So when I load up the app, uh, you basically create a little chat, um, you invite your friends, so it only can be you and your friends because you all have a unique ID, which is a great idea. People can't just jump in on your chats. Um, and you can have as many people as you want in there, uh, and it's sort of like a WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp group, and you can just call each other with my shockwave, and the second I joined, it closed the app. And I thought, oh, maybe that's how the app works. And you just, you know, decide, it just close it down because, you know, it thinks you're on your bike so it doesn't want you messing with your phone. No, that's not how the app works. Um, he couldn't hear me. I couldn't hear him. I could see the app was running on my phone, but there was no audio from anything. Uh, he could hear, um, when he logged on to the app and he joined the group, he could hear sort of like an audible little uh, microphone noise that meant he was in the group. I think he had a beep. Um, I got nothing, I closed the app down, started it back up again. Now, this isn't the first time I've done this. I've tried this on my own, I've tried this uh, with other people. Uh, I don't know anybody with a, uh, a Rurock helmet, but what I did also try and do is I've got my old helmet that's got a very cheap Bluetooth kit in it that was purely just to listen to music, and I did it with that. With uh, I used my, my fiancé's phone, um, and again, same thing, nothing, I got no... No difference, it just closes the app immediately, did the same thing on her phone. Um, my friend was using an iPhone, so I don't know if it may be different to that, but the app is for iPhone and Android. Um, so yeah, so it's unusable, completely unusable as a um, intercom system using the product that they provided uh, and the application they provided. So we ended up just doing a WhatsApp 
uh, voice call, which, you know, it works, it's not great. The volume on it is not fantastic. I mean, WhatsApp obviously is a, a contributing factor to that because it doesn't go very high, the volume doesn't on WhatsApp, so you can't turn it up too loud. However, the helmet in general, the, the audio is okay, but it's not amazing. They have recently, literally, I think the month after I bought the helmet, upgraded their shockwave system to um, to a Harman Kardon, I think it is. The same sort of thing they use in some Mercedes vehicles for the audio system. I don't know if it's any better. I know it's a little bit more expensive. It, it's, it was £150, it's now £170. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if they've made improvements there. Um, however, that on top of all of that, um, I was writing this email out to send to them to basically say, due to all of the blow, I want a refund. I want a refund or I want a replacement of the bigger size because for a helmet that is allegedly state of the art, a, 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 a sort of a product leader in the industry, um, and you know, it's, it's a, it, a, a, as a package, it was a five hundred pound helmet. Like you, the the core helmet is three hundred seventy five pound. The shockwave system was one hundred and fifty pound. I bought the pin lock, which was twenty five pound. You, you know, you, you're looking at five hundred pounds worth of kit. And it's just not up to standard. It's it's really not. It's if you I've had Cardo before, um, and I've never had a problem with them. I've I've had friends that have had Senna, never had a problem with them. And if they do, you know, you just swap it out. It's fixed. Um, or there's maybe a temporary problem. This is basically you're paying 150 pound for to be able to listen to music and not at a great quality. Uh, and the battery life isn't fantastic either. Um, in all this, I noticed two more issues. Um, one of them was the absolute deal breaker for me and the reason why I believe I'm getting a replacement. So the first thing was, the shockwave system itself obviously fits in the back of the helmet. Um, so you, you remove it because it's magnetically held in. Uh, if I can find the tab to the bottom. Um, you remove it and then that's that. And then you've got a little charger port at the front. Um, it's a USB-C, which I was very, very happy about when I got the helmet. Um, because USB-C charges a lot faster, it's a lot more efficient, and if, I only have USB-C now because I'm an Android user, so it's just useful for me. So on one of my first rides out with a friend, um, after we realised the app wasn't working, uh, stupid me had not charged my Shockwave kit for our little trip. Um, so after about 10, 20 minutes of the ride, my Shockwave died. Um, you know, not Shockwave's fault, I just didn't charge it, it's my fault. However, we get to the pub, um, and luckily for me, on my bike, I ride a Honda uh, CMX 1100, and that has a USB-C charger built into the uh, under the seat. And I have a USB-C charger uh, plugged in that runs to the front of the bike so I can charge my phone. Uh, it is very, very uh, adequate charger. It's not one of these ones that sort of trickle charges your phone, so if it's at 20%, it will sort of stay around 20%. If it's at 20% and you plug it in and you drive for 20 minutes, your phone's going to be around about 60-70%. You know, it works just like a fast charger from a plug. It's a very, very, very good charger. Um, it gives out enough power to be able to charge your phone adequately. So I plugged my, my uh, Shockwave kit into it thinking, oh, I was literally, uh, well, sat outside of the pub. Uh, we just had a sandwich. The, my bike was less than a foot away from me, so I just put my steering lock on and I left the bike running and thought, I'll leave the bike running. Let, let my let my phone charge. We were the only people outside, it was very cold, so I wasn't interrupting or being rude to anybody. Um, so I thought I'd do that. Um, notice when I plugged it in that the red charging light indicator didn't turn on, so I just thought maybe it's just that dead, it will take a little bit of time. So I left it, we had lunch, probably took about half an hour. Um, so, finish lunch, I go to the bike, I pull the, pull, pull the shockwave back off, put it back together, and with the shockwave, when you tap, when you connect it to your phone, it tells you what your percentage is, and it was at one percent still. Um, so I thought, oh, is it broken? Maybe, maybe something was wrong with my charger. I put my charger into my phone. Phone starts charging straight away with no problem. I get home uh, and I plug the shockwave kit into my PC because uh, I tend to. Just, oh, well, the plan was to just leave it on top of my computer, plug it into the USB at the front. Problem solved. Again, no, no red charging indicator came on. Um, so I. Got the plug, took it to the took it to the wall, put the put the put a proper wall plug in, put the USB in, plugged it in, and it started charging. So I'm not sure what their voltage or ampage requirement is to charge the shockwave. I haven't tried it with a battery pack because my goal with it was uh, what I could do is I could keep a battery pack in my bike, or in one of my saddlebags, or in my backpack when I go on a long long ride because uh, we've got some plans to go camping and stuff this year. Um, and do, do something like that 
and I could just pop it on charge, leave it on a bag, or plug it in under my bike seat through the bike charger, and no problem. Uh, apparently, I can't do that. Um, I'm not sure why that's the case. Uh, I, I've looked on the website. It doesn't say anything about uh, the lack of charging that you need or how much power you need or it needs specifically to be plugged into the wall. You do not receive a, um, a charging brick with the um, with the system, so you only get the cable. So very unusual to, to me and I'm very, very disappointed that I spent £150 on something that you can't even charge off my bike that it's designed to be used with. Um, unusual but yeah um, and then the sort of straw that broke the camel's back for me was something I learned about in my first video so the visor clips so these visor clips I have done exactly what I said I would do and I lost them so I started off and I, I dropped one at the car park at work which is an underground car park I will just undo it for you so you twist it and it pops off and it is a little pin with some teeth on it uh, and I dropped it and it fell down a drain uh, luckily for me, um, I had some tools in the office, so I managed to go and get the tools. Um, I managed to go and get the tools, and I got I got the grey off the drain, and I managed to get the pin back. However, I've changed this visor. I think it was the fourth time I ever changed the visor because I tend to wear this tinted visor um, because there's no um, sun uh, sun visor you can flick down. The glare from the sun is just unbearable, and I drive on the motorway quite often, so it's very open. If the sun is out, then it's just it's just not very enjoyable, and I don't like wearing sunglasses while I ride. Especially, I can't get my sunglasses on with this helmet because it's so tight, it hurts the side of my head. Um, so yeah, I tend to wear this. So the one day I was heading out, and it was around about 7 o'clock, I knew it was going to get dark before I got home, so I thought I'll swap out and I'll put my clear visor on because I don't want to ride home in the dark with a tinted visor. So I took them off like I do, um, I popped the side of it off, um, I then took the other side off, took the pin out, popped that side off, I picked up my other visor, I then popped it back on. So the, those of you that don't know, you have a very, very basic system. Um, you've got a little nipple that sticks outside the helmet, and you've got a, um, and you've got a groove here that the, there's sort of like two pins um, one pin goes in here, and then the hole goes around the nipple at the top. Right, so, on the side of the visor, again, very, very basic. So you've got the hole there, and on the inside, if you can see that, you've got a little um, pin just here. So, I watched the video on this from Rurock, made by Rurock, when I first got the helmet, because I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing, because I changed my visor quite regularly. So... That being said, I watched a video where the guy from Rurock, I think it's the CEO or whoever he is, uh, gets the helmet, he just pops the hole over there and presses and it, it locks straight in, perfect. The other side, his video, he says it can be slightly tight, so you need to push the visor in and roll and press until you hear an audible click. Now, the first few times I did this, Yes, I hear an audible click. Then this time I did it, uh, I couldn't hear get an audible click. I was trying, I was trying, I was pushing, I was pushing, to the point where I thought, I'm gonna break something if I carry on doing this. So, after looking at it, you probably can't see it on this, to be honest, it is, it, it, it is, quite, uh, it is quite small. But that little circular clip just there is deformed. So in pushing it down, it's sort of flared the top of the, of the pin. So the top of the pin is now bigger than the side of the visor. Obviously causes a problem, means I cannot get the visor on the helmet. I had to get pliers and a screwdriver, I managed to bodge it, I managed to get it all together. By the time I'd done all that, I put my helmet down, I put my gear away, I put my bike away, I got in the car and I drove to my friends because I just couldn't be bothered with the faff of messing with the helmet anymore. So when I got back home, um, I sent a very large, annoyed email with all the pictures of every issue I've had, um, the side of the helmet, everything I could think of. I sent it all in a big email. I'd stated in there that they'd ignored my previous email about the quality issues I'd had. They just sent the same response they sent in the first place, which was, if your helmet's been used, blah, blah, blah. And after this, I finally got a good response. So I finally got a response. It only took about uh, a day or two, I think, to get a response back from them. Um, 
and I got a response. They basically said to me <coughs> that apologise, we're sorry that this has happened. I had a little bit of an argument with them um, because as you can see, I have bought and installed the Rurock official uh, GoPro map. Now, I said that I can send the helmet back, that's fine, um, but I have a GoPro map. It was £20, uh, which to me is quite expensive for a tiny bit of plastic that does not stick onto the helmet very well. Um, so I'll need another one if you're going to send me a new helmet. And, and they'd agreed to send me a AML, so a, a medium to large helmet. Uh, they replied, no, you need to take that off before you send it back. So I have this back and forth because I'm not going to take this off and potentially damage the helmet um, and do more bad than good, all for the sake of I just don't want to buy another £20 uh, attachment. Now, if the ML came and the quality was better... I wouldn't be too bothered and I would just dispute the fact the shockwave system doesn't work and I would try to replace the shockwave system. So it took a while, about six emails in total, but I managed to get through to um, the person I was speaking to and they understood that I needed a new um, mount because I can't take that off without probably scratch or damage the helmet somehow. So yes, so tomorrow I will be sending this back. They've sent me a FedEx label. Um, luckily for me, I've still got the original box. So I'm going to put it all in the original box, I'm going to be sending it back, and they'll be sending me an ML helmet. Now, I will do again, obviously, I'll, I'm going to do an unboxing, and I'll do a overall video of it. I'm going to try my best not to ride with the helmet on, because I I, I want my money back. Um, if the helmet is the same, and, I, and it's either too big, um, or it's still uncomfortable, or there's imperfections on it, then yes, I will 100% be asking for a full refund. Um, on that note of a full refund, they were very awkward with me and they told me that I can't have a full refund for a helmet that I've worn. Um, I argued that, well, okay, but if you're going to be receiving the helmet I've worn back because you've accepted the return on it due to the issues I've stated and you're going to send me a brand new helmet, surely that's brand new now so I can send that back and that will be a full refund because it's a brand new helmet as long as I've not put it on and go on a ride. Um, Again, we had a back and forth for a while because I don't think they quite understood where I was coming from, but that was all agreed. So, at the moment, I will be receiving a new helmet. I think it takes a while. So, uh, I think they said, this is a next day delivery it's set for. So, it's um, next day uh, delivery. So, if I send it tomorrow, they should get it on Friday. And then I think it takes up to 20 working days for them to inspect to the helmet. Um, after the inspection's completed, as long as they're satisfied, they'll then dispatch me a new helmet, which is quite annoying because my old helmet, the reason I bought a new one was because I dropped it really badly um, from quite height and I have a split in the top of the helmet. So really, I don't want to ever wear that helmet again, but you know, I can't go on my bike now because I don't have a helmet and I'm £500 out of pocket um, and it's all their fault. So Personally, I don't think that it's very fair. I don't think that that's a good system. I think they should just immediately dispatch me a new helmet when they receive this helmet. And if there's any issues and they something that I'd lied or whatever, then they either issue me a fine or something. I don't know, because that, either way, they'll have received their helmet back. I've only got one helmet and I'll only ever receive what I initially paid for. So yeah, I just think that process is a bit unfair uh, and the, the, it's not very customer focused at all. Um, but that being said, either way, um, I'm very much looking forward to getting the new helmet to see what it looks like. I will be doing an unboxing video. Again, sorry this has gone on a little bit long. It was a, quite a detailed video, so I'll try to cram it as much as I can. Um, thank you for some of the comments I had on my previous video. I have um, switched the room around so the light is behind me. Allegedly, that's better. I'm videoing this on my GoPro, so hopefully that's better as well as I phone. I did actually record it on my phone, and I've got a very good phone and a very good camera. I just think the way the lighting was, it, it made it a bit grainy and it looked a bit of a mess. Um, so yeah, so hopefully this is better. Um, it's not as good a side of the room. I prefer having a bit more desk space, but I am looking at building a desk here, so hopefully we'll have a bit more room uh, in the future. But either way, um, thank you very much for coming back and watching or watching for the first time. Please, guys, if you enjoyed it, uh, like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll have some more time to do a few more videos and a few more reviews on some more products that I've bought recently. Um, thank you very much and uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. 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 Bye.